This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, January the 30th, 2019. Today in 1969, on the rooftop of Apple Records, the Beatles held an impromptu concert, which turned out to be their last concert. It lasted just short of 45 minutes until the London Bobbies came and shut them down for noise complaints. The show was less impromptu than it may have seemed. The Fab Four were joined by a keyboardist named Billy Preston, and the set was meant to tease out changes and to get that live recording feel to the five tracks they played for the release of an LP titled Get Back. None other than Alan Parsons manned the recording system on the roof, and Michael Lindsay Hogue had a team of video experts capturing the event for posterity. The rooftop concert was considered the last time the Beatles were really on top of their own game. The Abbey Road album was good, and it was recorded later that year, but it's not considered on par with Revolver or the White Album. And the band officially broke up in September 1969, less than eight months after the infamous January 30th rooftop concert. Also today, a few years earlier, in 1847, the town of Yerba Buena, California, was renamed to San Francisco. Yerba Buena is a family of mint-like herbs, which are simple remedies for minor ailments, stomach concerns, things like that. San Francisco, of course, is a reference to St. Francis of Assisi. The city has a checkered past, at times a delightful family-oriented city, at times a gold rush cesspool, and since the mid-1990s Silicon Valley tech boom, a mishmash of super-rich adolescent entrepreneurs and extremely poor washouts. The city has always prided itself on being edgy and anti-authoritarian, which nowadays has led to serious troubles with infrastructure, drug abuse, and deviance. The city of St. Francis has always been ahead of its time, but at least at this moment in history, it feels a bit more like a city out of time. Today is the tragic day in 1948, when Mahatma Gandhi, the great icon of nonviolent social change, and the ideal of the Hindu value moksha, was shot three times at a morning prayer gathering by a Hindu extremist. He was instrumental in Indian liberation from the UK and in bringing India to the turbulent partition era. Gandhi remains an icon all over the world today, largely because of his influence upon prominent members of the hippie community who traveled to India in the early 1960s looking for the wisdom of the East often as an act of rebellion against their bourgeois upbringing in the increasingly wealthy post-war U.S. Gandhi's teachings and his methods of social change through hunger strikes and his non-violence were the starting point, but sadly not so often the ending point, of the hippie generation's protests against all things Western in the U.S. in the 1960s and 1970s. About a hundred years before that, in 1838, we saw the first attempt to assassinate a sitting U.S. president when a U.K.-born house painter fired several shots at U.S. President Andrew Jackson. He was quickly subdued by the crowd, including several congressmen and Jackson himself, and at trial, the man was found not guilty by reason of insanity. Doctors over the years speculated that the lead-based paint to which he was so frequently exposed must have given him some type of chemical-induced mental disorder. Four sitting U.S. presidents have been assassinated while in office. That's Abraham Lincoln in 1865, James Garfield in 1881, William McKinley in 1901, those three Republican, and John F. Kennedy in 1963, a Democrat. Six other presidents survived assassination attempts. Andrew Jackson, of course, today in 1835, Theodore Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Henry Ch- Harry Truman, Gerald Ford, and Ronald Reagan. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.